Hi everyone, we'll give it just a minute or two more to see if we get a, a few more people on to our session and then we'll we'll begin. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started in the interest of time. So how we'll run tonight's webinar is that our animal management officers, uh, Supervisor Kelly Jellen and animal management officer, Cami Ricci will give a short slide presentation and cover some topics. And then we will be more than happy to take any questions from you. Go ahead and either put them in the questions box or the chat so that we know that you have questions and we'll have you get on and have a conversation with the animal management officers. Um, in the interest of time, we'll try to end as close to seven, right at seven as we can, just because everybody's time is important. We want to be mindful of that. So I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Kelly and Cami introduce themselves. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Um, good evening. And my name is Kelly Jellen. I'm the Animal Management Supervisor for the City of Westminster. And this is Officer Cami Ricci. So... We also have uh, three other officers that do work for the, the unit and we all are associated with the police department. So we'll go ahead and start our presentation. <clears throat> so the big question is, what are animal management officers? Um, animal management officers are uniformed civilian employees who work for the police department and enforce a municipal animal code. Um, we are officers that we handle calls for service that involve animals, um, domestic, exotic. Um, we do some wildlife. Um, what else am I missing in there? Some, uh, some livestock some, uh, so, birds of prey. and birds of prey. So part of our wildlife as well. <clears throat> Um, we are here seven days a week, um, with the exception of Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's Day. Um, our hours are from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and we are contracted with the Foothills Animal Shelter. So any animals that we do pick up will go to Foothills Animal Shelter. Um, we are in two counties, um, Adams and Jefferson County, but we do utilize Foothills Animal Shelter as our contract. So if you need to get a hold of us, since we are part of the police department, um, the best way is to get a hold of us through dispatch. Um, and that's also for after hours as well. Um, because if we're not on duty, then our calls do, are handled by patrol officers. And then we will follow up on those in the morning. So there's a few numbers up there. There's um, the non-emergency dispatch number. We also have an office phone, which goes directly to voicemail, and we do check that throughout the day and then in the morning. And then you can also um, access an email complaint through Access um, Westminster, and um, that's on the City of Westminster's homepage. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it's on the left-hand side, and it's called Access, and there's an, a section in there called Animal Management, and you can click on that and um, send in whatever you need. So just kind of looking at some numbers, so some throw out there for y'all. Um, in 2016 to 2020, you can see that our numbers are pretty steady. These are the top five calls of our city that we handle animal bites, animals at large. Um, everything's real steady there. We've had a little bit of decrease after 2018 with animals running at large. And I believe that's because a lot of people now are microchipping their animals. Um, or they do have tags on their animals. So if somebody does pick them up, that um, they'll go ahead and contact the owner instead of calling us, which we love because we 
we uh, like to get animals home instead of taking them to the shelter. Kelly, do you think we see a drop in the numbers in 2020 just due to COVID and people being at home more and around with their animals? Yes, I would uh, definitely say that. Um, I think we had a decrease in our barking dogs as well because people were home with their animals at that time and were able to monitor them. Same with dogs at large. Um, but it still kind of remains steady for us because we did work through COVID. Um, but I do think that our numbers were a little bit down because people were at home. So if anybody's looking for um, the ordinances for the city of Westminster's animal codes, you can go to Muni Code um, Colorado and type in Westminster Colorado. And then our codes are under title six under, and then we're under chapter seven. So that will give you all the animal ordinances that we enforce here in the city. You, um, the public can also access, uh, sorry, access this through the city website under uh, the code enforcement, or I'm sorry, not code enforcement, but under the code portion of the website. So our top five calls that we handle, um, our first one is animal bites, animal versus human. We do reports on um, all dog versus human, cat versus human, and ferret uh, versus human. Um, and bites, when we say bite, we mean anything that breaks the skin. Um, so a lot of the times we'll get reports from either medical clinics um, or people calling in bites, um, but most of them come in through, if you go to the urgent care or a hospital to get treatments, um, we'll get the report from there. Um, the next would be animals at large. Um, most people think that's dogs, but it's also cats. Um, cats um, are not allowed to leave the property of uh, the owner. So if you have a cat and it's leaving your property, it needs, it cannot do that. It's considered at large and you can get a ticket for that. Um, animal neglects and cruelty. Our top one is uh, dogs in cars, um, especially right now that it's getting hot. We're getting a lot of people going shopping with their dogs and leaving them in the car. We're getting a lot of calls for that, um, especially during at the grocery stores. Um, animal noise disturbances, uh, barking dogs, um, especially in the middle of the night, uh, and then vicious animals. Um, and that's where the uh, animal bites come in at. <clears throat> so when we get an animal bite, the first thing we do in it is investigate the circumstance of the bite, um, which would be provoked or non-provoked. A provoked bite would be what happened um, were, was the child, let's say it was a child um, that got bit, was the child going up when the dog was eating and stuck its face or hand um, near the dog and the dog turned around and bit it. That would be what we call a provoked bite. Non-provoked bite would be somebody's walking by um, a house and the dog comes out and just attacks that person. That's a non-provoked bite. Um, so we have to determine was it a provoked or non-provoked bite. Um, quarantine of the animal. If if the animal broke the skin, it's an automatic quarantine of 10 days, regardless of if it's upstate on the rabies or not. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Removal of the animal if necessary. Um, sometimes it is deemed necessary to remove the animal from the home um, and take it to the shelter on a court hold. And uh, the courts may have to decide if the animal can be returned or um, uh, if something else needs to be done with the animal. Um, issuance of summons if necessary. Sometimes we do need to issue a summons uh, to get the owner into court um, on potentially dangerous or vicious animal uh, charges. Animals at large, it's one of our biggest um, cases that we do. Uh, so the first thing that we do when we ca catch a dog running at large is see if we can identify who that dog is. Uh, the easiest way to do that is if they have tags on. Um, uh, some people have a a name tag on the dog with the dog's name on it, phone number, address. Um, a lot of times they're not up to date though. So the address is wrong, the phone number is wrong. Um, the second is dog licensing. The good thing about dog licensing is um, it's it, you have to update it yearly. So a lot of the times that is the most up to date information. Microchips, a lot of people will have microchips on their dog, but they don't keep them up to date. A lot of the microchips are from years ago and the, the address is wrong, the, uh, the phone numbers are all wrong, and sometimes even the owners are wrong. So it's really hard to uh, try and track down who owns the dog and where that dog is from. 
Um, we do have three off-leash dog parks in, in the city of Westminster. Um, so if you wanted to take your dog and run them off leash, we have no problem with that at those three dog, uh, dog parks. Anywhere else in the city, you have to have your dog on leash. Yeah, and you do need to follow the rules at the dog park as well. So Absolutely. Your animal has to be spayed or neutered if, they're, if you're going to use the dog park. It also has to be over the age of four months and it has to be current on your rabies vaccination. And if you are a Westminster resident, both Adams and Jefferson County, you do have to have that dog license to use the dog park as well. And you can only have three dogs. You cannot take more than three dogs uh, per person into a dog park. You cannot take yours and your neighbor's dogs by yourself if it's more than three. So you can't take eight dogs to the dog park and run them up there. Um, dogs are not allowed to be tied up in public areas um, in the city of Westminster. So you cannot go to the store, tie your dog outside um, to a pole and go into the side of the store. That is considered at large and you can receive an at large ticket for that. And then we also have um, common areas such as in um, trailer parks or condos, apartments. Um, there's common areas you can't tie your dog up outside in that common area because that's owned by the property itself. It's not by owned, owned by you individually. Ladies, uh, JP has a question, and before we move on, we normally ask the questions at the end, but we have a small group, and he wants to know, uh, how do you enforce the mandatory dog licensing? So a lot of times, it depends on how we come in into contact with you. Um, if we catch your dog um, off leash, let, let's say I catch a dog at large and I impound it, um, we try and give you a warning. If, it's a, if your dog is um, neutered and spayed, we like to give a warning at first and give you that 10 days to come into compliance and purchase the dog license. Um, it's very simple to do. If your dog is up to date on rabies, bring in your dog's rabies certificate into the police department. It's $20 um, here at the police department. They do accept cash or check um, and we'll get your license and you'll be out the door. Um, if you wanted to do it online at the Foothills Animal Shelter, you could use your debit card and you can upload that rabies certificate and you're done um, for the whole year. Um, if, at that, if after that 10 days expires and you don't have your rabies certificate, or um, excuse me, your license, we will come out and issue a summons, which is $100 fine and a mandatory court appearance. So also we do that for any animal contact that we have. So any house that we go to um, or residence that there's an animal violation, such as barking dog, we're there to check on the welfare of an animal. If there's a dog there and we don't find a dog license, and then if we usually give we'll give you a warning usually for 10 days to get that taken care of and then if we've had repeated offenses at a house and there's still no dog licensing then we get we go ahead and give an automatic summons into court so jp i'd like to just quickly unmute you to make sure that we answered your question so if you could unmute yourself and just let us know if you have anything else on dog licensing no thank you for the answers thank you for clarification you're Thank you. Let me move you forward, ladies. So going back to our cruelty and neglect investigations, the like I said earlier, the number one cruelty cases that we get are dogs in hot cars, um, especially right now with the heat in, uh, we're getting at least one a day of dogs in cars. Um, I think that we had at least one summons a week that we're writing for, for dogs in hot cars. Um, I have personally had one dead dog in a car. Um, they, a person went to lunch, thought their dog would be okay in the car, she parked it in the shade, came back an hour and a half later and the dog was dead. Um, they thought it was okay because it's in the shade and they went left the windows cracked. Um, they don't realize it gets hot really fast um, and it doesn't take long for, for an animal to come to the heat. Um, another one that we get a lot is animals left outside with no shelter, whether it's hot outside or cold outside animals, um, especially in the city of Westminster, we have an ordinance that they need to have access to adequate shelter at all times, regardless of the weather. Um, no access to, to water. Um, it is uh, also an ordinance that all animals need access to water, even if they're left. It, it is not illegal to leave your dog in a car as long as it's not excessively hot. So if you wanted to leave your dog in a car with the air conditioning running, they have access to water, perfect. Um, poor living conditions, we get a lot of, of uh, calls to go on welfare checks um, for dogs living in poor living conditions. Um, and sometimes we've had to remove animals because they're not living in conditions that are conducive to um, the welfare of the animals.
we get a lot of these as well. These They're are very popular, very especially popular. at night. We usually come into uh, animal noise complaints that patrol has followed up on or have responded to the night before and we follow up on the next day. And a lot of the ones we're getting um, a lot of is that people have dog doors and do dogs are going out um, through the dog door at night and barking at, oh, we don't even know what they're barking at. Wildlife. Yeah, raccoon, <laughs> the fox went by, a, a leaf blew by, and it, people are upstairs sleeping and they don't hear their dog, but the neighbors are, and so they're calling it in. Um, so this is something that we, we deal with on a daily basis. And some people don't realize that dogs are barking until they get our notice. And they're like, I didn't realize he was. And then sometimes they fix it, sometimes they don't. Can you go to the next slide, Sherry? There we go. So when we get these uh, animal noise complaints, the first thing we want is, is an exact location of where the disturbance is occurring. Because it it's never helpful to get I hear a dog barking on the corner of, of 90th and, and Sheridan. That's not very helpful, and it, we can't we can't help that. Um, we need to know an exact location. Um, so an address is very helpful. Um, if you can get a description of the dog, that's great. Um, we also need uh, your name, phone number, address, and like I said, a description of the animal. We don't need a specific breed because uh, some people don't know breeds, but a brown dog, a medium-sized dog, you know, you know, something specific. We don't need a specific breed, but just a just a, a slight description of the dog. Let me touch on that um, personal information. The reason why um, that we're asking for your information, um, we're not going to. If you want to remain anonymous, you can. Um, the reason why we need it is because sometimes we have a lot of questions um, to ask you, and we also want to get a little bit more information about what time the dog may be barking, how long it's barking, is there one or two? Um, so that's why we request that information. Um, you don't have to leave it. You can leave it as anonymous. Um, we do take those types of complaints, um, but um, for us, it's easier for us to, to, to get the information and talk to you so that way we can handle the complaint correctly. Is because when I speak to the dog owner and they're asking me, well, when was the dog barking? It's really hard for me to say, well, I don't know, because I don't know. And they're like, well, which dog was it? I don't know. So it really helps if we have enough information to say your dog was barking at 2 a.m. It was the little white one, and we need to figure out how to keep it quiet. What can we do to educate you on how to keep your dog quiet? Um, so any information you can give us is great. Um, on anonymous complaints um, or any complaints, we will only issue three in a year, um, three, uh, excuse me, warnings um, before we're like, we can't do anything else unless we get more information. So uh, video and audio um, and a wit written witness statement in order to, to write a summons into court is what we need or two individual witness statements from you and a neighbor. So you can't have two in your roommate, two in your uh, spouse or significant other it has to be two individual witnesses to say this is what's going on. Um, this is uh, these are the times it's happening. This is when it's disturbing us, so that we can write that summons into court. The court can see it's not just a one neighbor who's upset. It's it's multiple neighbors. Or okay, here's video, and we can see that this is a problem, and we have enough to show the courts that this is an ongoing issue, and we need to get this person into court. Yeah. So. We won't issue a summons to somebody. We have to, by ordinance, we have to warn, give them a written warning first within that 12 month period. So we do start off with a written warning, which is mailed to the resident. Um, and then from there, if we get a call back within that 12 month period, we will take another, we'll, we can do another warning, or if you have the information, the evidence, we can go ahead and do a summons. But if um, we're doing another warning, we will go out to the residents and then um, try and make contact with them at that time. If they're not there, we close the door and have them call in so we can kind of go over what the complaint is. And just before we move on, um, JP had another question, so I want to just unmute him and let him ask. Okay. Or a statement regarding... Uh, barking dogs. JP, if you want to unmute yourself. There we go. Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. No. 
Um, we were talking about uh, requirements uh, to enforce animal noise. And earlier you had said that barking dogs are the biggest problem that need more attention. Did they answer your question or do you have more, more questions regarding that topic for them? Uh, I think that clears it up, what, what's here on the screen. Okay. okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our dangerous dog ordinance, we do not have a breed specific uh, ban or anything in the city of Westminster. We uh, go by the actions of a dog instead of the breed. So when we talk about dangerous dogs, um, you know, it, like I said, it doesn't go by breed. We go by action. So anything from a, a tiny chihuahua up to an Anatolian shepherd can be a dangerous animal. And we're going to go off of the behavior of the animal. Um, has that dog bitten before? And what can we do so that small little action doesn't develop into a bigger problem? So if we have a small problem with the dog, um, does that dog need training? Does the owner need to take the dog into training? Do we need to have that dog um, be spayed or neutered? Um, what do we need to do to ensure that that dog doesn't become a bigger problem later? Um, we've had dogs that, you know, have gotten into a small altercation um, and maybe bit somebody and they've gone into court and they've gone through training and they got spayed or neutered and um, they've gone through everything that they needed to do. We've never had another problem with them. Um, and then we've had dogs that have you know, bitten severely, we've had to remove them and go through the courts and, and have the courts deem them to be vicious and they were not returned to the owners. So we take it case by case. We don't do it on a, a breed specific. And it, it's not just um, dogs versus humans or um, it can also be dog versus dog. So we've had um, incidents where, um, you know, dog off leash and somebody's walking their dog down the street and the dog comes over and attacks that dog. So we handled those in the same way that we would um, it, if it had bitten a human. So we, we process our investigation the same way. Um, and if it is a problem dog that we've seen an issue with, we will impound that dog and, and let the owner go to court. And, let the, and it's up to the courts to make that decision if the dog comes back to the to the home or not. Um, it's not animal management. We're just doing our job by going out and investigating it. And if we feel that this dog is a danger to society, um, then the dog will be removed and held at the shelter until the owner is, is brought to court. And, and then at that time, um, the court will deem what is necessary. Like Officer Ritchie said, if the, they can have the dog back and then go to training, um, it needs, you know, needs to be in a enclosed shelter in the backyard, the fence needs to be fixed, any of that. So that is good for dogs or animals versus human as well as dogs versus dogs. Um, and we have had on occasion a cat, a loose cat run up and attack somebody and, and an owner is found in that owner is charged with um, dangerous animal as well. So um, we have two codes. We have potentially dangerous animal and we have um, vicious, uh, potentially vicious animal. So, and vicious is the higher of the two. All right, so moving on. Um, we do other areas of enforcement. So those are just our top five. Um, we also do pet limit. Um, we also do sales of animals that are illegal, um, like um, puppies that are being sold under age on um, public property. Um, we try and get that taken care of. We aid in helping rescue animals as well. We just had a duck rescue yesterday that took us, little ducklings went down the um, grate, the storm drain, and between animal management and the fire department, an hour and a half later, we got all seven babies out and the mama, so and transport them out to city park. So if you go over there, you might see them. Um, we do wildlife, we do rabies control. So if we have bats, there's on occasion that we do have to have bats tested um, for rabies if they're sick or injured. Um, we also do some livestock violations. Um, that is, um, is now uh, is allowed in the city just for chickens and bees. Um, we'll go into that in just a minute. And I don't know, what else? Are we missing anything? So we, we do a variety of things with animals. So, and we 
that's what we do. <laughs> we just do all kinds of animals. <clears throat> so moving on to chickens and bees. So we do have an ordinance that livestock is not allowed in the city. So no ducks, no goats, no horses, no cows. Um, but you are allowed to have chickens and you are allowed to have bees. Um, and this is only good for single family residential areas. So not duplex areas, not apartment complexes. Um, you do have to have a permit to be able to have chickens and bees in the city. And um, they must be kept in the rear yard. There has to be a six foot privacy fence around them. There are setbacks for the coops. Um, and that can all be found on the website for the city of Westminster under the um, police and then I believe animal section. And same as with access to, if you go to the access, there's some information on chickens and, bee and bees and how to get a permit. Um, <clears throat> this is a big one. I think um, we don't handle wildlife. We're, well, we're not wildlife officers. Um, we handle just domestics um, mainly, but nuisance wildlife in the city, we do have quite an abundance. So raccoons, squirrels, skunks, foxes, coyotes, and rabbits, those are our nuisance animals and we don't do anything, we don't trap them. Um, if you have an issue with them, you can call Colorado Parks and Wildlife or you would have to contact the pest control um, company to have them removed. And then here's the big one, um, coyotes, um, birds of prey, foxes, um, they're out there, um, they are predators and you do need to protect your pets from them. Um, they, you know, people think that coyotes only come out night, but they don't, they're out all hours of the day. You can see them at noon running in the open space, running through a neighborhood and they are very, um, they're scavengers and they'll, um, opportunists. So they will take advantage of anything they can. They can't tell the difference between a chihuahua and a rabbit. So that's where you have to know that in the city of Westminster, we do have this wildlife. It is there and it's and you as an animal owner need to take the responsibility to make sure you're protecting your pet to make sure that these predators don't get them. And then Community safety and education, that's what we do too. So we do a lot of lot of educating. We, um, we'd we rather educate than issue a ticket if we have to. Um, if people just aren't getting it, um, then we, we don't hesitate in issuing them a summons to court, but we try to educate as much as we can. Um, we find different ways to work with the public, um, either it be this talk or talk in the community or we'll be in a park and, and talk to people as well. Um, so that's what we, we provide the public with safety and education. That's just part of, that's part of our job. And um, I think we all enjoy doing the education okay. part of it. That's probably our favorite part. And then um, we like to give as much resources as we can as well. Um, in August, we are doing a vaccination clinic. So keep watching um, the, the Facebook page for, city, uh, for the Westminster Police Department. Um, and they'll, we'll be getting out some information hopefully in the next couple of weeks on that. Where you can also license your dog at the same time. Correct. And that will be a drive through clinic, correct? Correct. Yep. So you won't even have to get out of your car. Perfect. I think that's all you guys have for us. Um, we have two people on our meeting tonight. So thank you for joining. I appreciate your time. Do you guys have any other questions for us? Please um, ask anything that you have. We're here to answer questions for you. And maybe while you're typing in, if you are if you have any additional questions, I just want to throw out there that we do have a new police department app that we've just deployed and launched in the last month. You can find it in the Google Play Store or under the Apple Store under Westminster Police. We have direct links to our animal management and to the municipal code, to news, events. So all of the stuff that they talked about, our, our licensing clinic and all of that will be on our app. Um, easy at your fingertips with your phone. So. Do download that app if you have time. I am not seeing any other questions tonight, so I want to thank everybody for their time and coming out. Thank you, ladies, for uh, presenting us and getting us some information on our animal management program and how things work. If at any time you guys have any questions, please just reach out to us and we'll be happy to answer those for you. So everybody have a good evening. Thanks.
Good night.